I'm going to assume that you already have an idea of what your mystery is going to be. So we're not going to waste time on thinking of ideas for a mystery. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually plot the clues for the mystery idea that you have. We're going to do it in three stages. To make it easier to understand, we're going to talk about writing mystery as if we're finding and putting together puzzle pieces. So stage one, suggest that there is a puzzle to solve. How can we be invested in uncovering a mystery if we don't realize there is a mystery to solve in the first place? It's like, how can we solve a puzzle if we don't realize there's a puzzle to solve? So in this stage, we're going to make the character and audience aware that there is a mystery to be uncovered. So what the question that you should be thinking first is how should the character find the first clue? How do we make it an exciting and mysterious moment of discovery? You've arrived at your hotel room, you sit down on your sofa, you turn on the TV, crack open a beer and watch the football. Whoops, spilled beer. It's all over the floor, under the sofa. So you grab a cloth, you get under the sofa to wipe it up. And while you're doing it, you stumble across a puzzle piece. Hold on, this must be part of the puzzle. Where are the other pieces? So now it's like there's the urge to go looking around the room. They find a single puzzle piece and they realize, oh, there must be a puzzle here. There must be a puzzle box somewhere around here. Where are the other pieces? The character should find the clue and realize that there's a mystery to solve in a spontaneous and unexpected way. That gives us the magic of unexpected discovery. The character was doing something completely separate. They weren't looking for any puzzle pieces because they didn't know there was any to find. And while they were doing something, whatever they were doing, they stumbled across the first clue. Right place, right time, that's all. That is how our character finds the first clue. They stumble across it while they were doing something else. I hope that sticks. So now he has to go looking for those other puzzle pieces where they are. And remember, they don't even know what the puzzle is or what it will look like once it's all put together. They don't know how big this puzzle is either. They have no idea how many pieces they need to find. Five pieces, 10 pieces, 20, a million pieces, who knows? Now the character will start by going to the first place they think that the rest of the pieces could be found. The puzzle box. And the puzzle box is the place where all of the other puzzle pieces, all of the clues, all of the answers should be found. This is where they think the answer should be found, but when they look there, they won't find anything. This could be a person or a place that they think will hold the answer that they need. We find one piece first, just one, and then they go looking for the box. It's the first place that they think the rest of the pieces will be found. Oh my, the box is empty. And when they realize that they can't find the answer there, that the box is empty, now they've got a real search on their hand. They're gonna go search for those puzzle pieces. Now the character goes looking around for the rest of those clues. There are three questions that you can ask yourself. How does the character stumble across the first piece? What were they doing? What is the puzzle box in your story? And now, where does your character begin searching for the rest of the clues? Once they realize they're not gonna find any in the puzzle box in the obvious place, they're gonna go searching, aren't they? As they find piece after piece, that picture becomes clearer. Every time they find a piece, they theorize what that picture could be and they might even test as to whether that could be true. So for example, in a detective story, huh, that looks like this person. And they're going to investigate it. And if you want the story to continue, <laughs> they're going to be wrong. So they're going to go search for some more clues. They get a better idea of what the picture could be. When they find some more clues, they go, oh, it's not this person. It actually looks like this person. The easier to find pieces will obviously be found first. Once they found them, what's left? 
The pieces that are much more hidden and much harder to find. The more puzzle pieces they do find, the harder it becomes to find the remaining few. Eventually they'll be looking for the last piece and it's really difficult to find. They're certainly not going to find it on their own. Usually the focus of the character will no longer be to find the last missing piece. Instead, the character will focus on finding a person who does know where it is that will point them in the right direction of the last piece. Of course, that person and that or that place that's going to point them in the right direction is also going to be hard to find. Stage three, the character will find the last piece to the puzzle during this stage and they will solve the mystery. This is leading up to the climax of the mystery, the reveal. There are two ways that this can play out. This can either be an anticipated reveal, which will be an intense, suspenseful roller coaster to its discovery, or it can be a total surprise, which will be a plot twist. I'll explain how to do both. The first way that this mystery reveal can play out is the anticipated reveal. So first, the character is going to have found out where this last missing piece can be found through the help of someone else. Then second, they go on this massive hunt, challenge after challenge, solving problems, overcoming obstacles to get to it. It's the last piece. You're going to make it really hard to get to. And the excitement comes from the uncertainty of, will, will they actually get to it? We know it's here, but they're just going to get to it. They're going to get to this glass clue. That's the challenge. Are they going to be able to get to it? They finally get to the last piece. They finally finish the puzzle. It will be a moment of clarity. And this moment will be an anticipated reveal because we knew that they were going to find it here. They just needed to get to it. And when they knew, we knew when they found it, that that's exactly the right answer. That's exactly what we needed. Now, if you have decided to write the final reveal of the mystery as a plot twist, as a surprise, it's very simple. The character is going to think that they have found the final piece. And then they go on this massive hunt through challenge after challenge, solving problems, overcoming obstacles to get to it. That is going to make the character and audience believe that the mystery has been solved and they have the full picture. And they will only then stumble across the actual final piece by mistake. Oh, and that is the unexpected plot twist. I thought this was the right one. And that means you're gonna to have to do everything I just said a second ago. Write this second to last piece as an anticipated reveal. You will treat this second to last puzzle piece as if it's the final puzzle piece to solve. Leave no room to your audience to think that there is something that has to be solved. The plot twist happens when the character stumbles across the actual final piece, which changes the entire picture. What? I thought we had solved the mystery. This changes everything. And then we realize what the true picture is. And we realize that that second to last piece was actually very misleading evidence. We were pointed in the wrong direction. They connect it to something that is not a red herring. Now, I created a video called How to Write Red Herrings. It was below standard. Whether that video is still up or not, I don't know, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it properly like this video. I only want to put out the highest quality on this channel, especially these types of videos, with the presentations. So look out for that. It's going to be a real roller coaster with twists and turns every single step of the way. I hope this helped. I'm Joe Webb, a storyteller. Learn to write fiction properly.